Eu gostaria de imaginar. I'd like to imagine the future of Angola in an extremely peaceful way. In a country with few people, an immense territory, and many things to be done on every level, it has everything it needs to be a producer. I believe Angola has much room for creation before it. In 1979, Augustinho Neto died. He was succeeded by the engineer José Eduardo dos Santos. Não é uma substituição fácil, nem tão pouco me parece uma substituição possível. É apenas uma substituição necessária. A luta continua e a vitória é certa. I think it's necessary after 26 years of war, that we engage in some serious reflection so that we do not find ourselves in a situation which might lead back to war. Our mission was to go looking for some comrades. We were in four vehicles. Mine was the second. The first passed, and my tank set off an anti-tank mine. The flames and the sand hit me right in the eyes, and I have never seen anything again. No light, nothing. Now I don't know what the sun is like. I feel the heat of the sun, but I can't see it. Now I don't have days or nights, but darkness forever. In the city of Huambo, we find the Bomba Alta Bomb Victim Recovery Center, one of the many in the country. It receives an average of 14 patients a week. We have a shelter, a place for inpatients. They spend between three and four weeks here. That is, if they adapt well, and the specialists think they're ready to leave with a prosthesis. After rehabilitation, all free of charge, 
They take their prosthesis, they're given a little money, and they return to their place of origin. Then I got frightened and asked the nurses to turn on the light. The nurses told me they couldn't, that the light was already on. Then my spirit came back. Ah, that's right, I stepped on a mine. And I started to cry. José Sayobo is an example. In fact, he showed and continues to show the entire world that disabled people are useful. At Bomba Alta, they make all the prothesis used by the patients in learning to walk. The center's workshops also make the majority of the crutches used in medical centers throughout the country. At that time, people thought that a person without sight, a blind person, had no future before them. Our trainer appeared, and that was the first time he asked me to take part in a sport for the disabled. I looked at him and thought, that man's crazy, a blind man running? when I can't even walk by myself. On the 1st of August, we went to the Greek Paralympic Games in Athens. The day of the competition, not even I thought there would be surprises. There were some great athletes there. But I beat my first record in the 100 meters and won the gold medal. Later in the 200 meters, I won gold again. In the 400 meters, I set a new record. I never thought I'd get to the Olympic Games. And it was the first time that an athlete had beaten four records in a single game. When I climbed the podium to receive the medal, as I heard our national anthem, I remembered the moment when I lost my sight. There, with all those people around me, filling the stadium and shouting, Angola, Angola. The important thing is to forget the war, and I think that war will not come to our country again. From now on, we must only think about studying, working, and sports. The struggle against landmines is a struggle which involves our entire society. All of us are working so that there will be no more mines in Angola. Domingos Justino is one of these people struggling against the blight of landmines on a daily basis. We're in the process of entering a minefield located very close to the town of Santo Antonio. These red stakes separate the safe area from the area which is not safe. This means that nobody can walk there. We have to walk through this corridor which has been cleared. In this minefield we have 21 sappers, of which six are doctors. As we can see, this sapper has found two mines. They're all Angolan. They're recruited from within this province. There's a lot of metal contamination, so we can't use metal detectors. We have to use alternative methods, such as manual excavation. Here's a BP-1 pressure mine, Cuban. They're set off just by putting pressure on them. They can be detonated with only three kilos of pressure. 
But we found another type of mine here on this side, which explodes with just 300 or 500 grams. 